those men, international in perspective and insight, were a threat to the very whites that they're sworn to protect. You don't get killed for any other reason than jeopardizing the whites of the whites that run the world. Martin King, who was a boule, met the bullet, not for the civil rights thing, but for the international war thing that got two Kennedy boys killed also. So we're looking at a group of men who have protected murderers. So what is the crime of this boule, as we allege? As many of them say, why do you step to my doorstep and accuse me of these things, of which I know not? <laughs> but their so-called limited understanding is in fact defiance and woven into the oath that they swear that they will never even act like they know who these people really are. <laughs> this is the founder of the boule, Henry Minton. If this was color, you'd see he's light, almost white. Because in the early aspects of the organization, there was a lot of that. Henry Minton is the founder and so-called pioneer in spirit. Brother was kind, knowing I needed a pointer. Of the organization Sigma Pi Phi, the head man of the organization is called the Grand Sire Archon. A-R-C-H-O-N is what a member is called after they have been inducted. They're an archon. He was the Grand Poopa from 19, uh, 1908 to 1909. Then became Grand Sire Archon Emeritus. The Grand Sire Archon is the head of the national boule. The head of the local boule is called Sire Archon. So the head of the LA chapter is Sire Archon. A member in any boule is called just Archon. So as Archon is a member, Sire Archon is the local head, Grand Sire Archon is the only head, the titular head. The Grand Sire Archon and those other top positions of the Boule have absolute and supreme authority over every Boule chapter, which are called subordinate chapters. Every subordinate chapter of the Boule is compelled to respond to the wishes of the Grand Sire Archon and the Executive Committee. This is a discussion about what Minton was thinking about in 1904 when he wanted to set up the organization. This is from the History of Sigma Pi Phi. That's the history book of the organization. The History of Sigma Pi Phi it's written by an alpha named Charles Wesley, who wrote the history book for A5A as well. Didn't he? <laughs> Didn't he? <laughs> and then the alpha's here? And he, yes, yes, okay, he did write it, yes. In that, he said, in summary, Minton wanted to create an organization which would partake, in his own words, of, quote, the tenets of Skull and Bones at Yale. Mm. Now, in the July 18th article on Skull and Bones, excuse me, on the Boule in the LA Times, and I'm going to show you the original article that we first found uh, on the subject, and I want to show you what it says, because in the article, you get the impression. And I just want to, when they say skull and bones at Yale, that's what they're talking about. That's, that's the logo for skull and bones at Yale. Now, who would want to be patterned after that? <laughs> because that doesn't look positive to me. Now, you're already a damn Greek. <laughs> now you done went and got some, some, some poison. <laughs> so that's a double header. Okay, I'm looking for you this opening article. Here we go. This is a little hard to see when I'm up here, so it's a little difficult. Hmm. Let me take this off. It's a little warm in here. It's even warmer up here. This is the original LA Times article. 
Everybody see that? Did you see that? When it ran in 1990? You did see it. No, you didn't see it. What's the date on That's July 18th, 1990. Elite Fraternity Widens Agenda of Black Men. This is the original article that came out on the boule that we just casually discussed here at The Good Life, which led to this penetration. Because by the time Brother Oswa gets up and starts decodifying a little of that symbolism, you will see that we have in fact cracked a riddle that has contained our people. Our people have been contained by an organized element of secret people who have used riddles, mysteries, and secret societies to jam us. And what we are doing is we are unlocking or decodifying the mystery because once decodified and exposed, those who are secret in the light will not be as effective. Which must be our goal since liberation is not theirs. You can't liberate as a Greek. You can't liberate in the name of Greece. So you may, everybody say, well, you know, Steve is really a black thing. It may be. But you ain't going to liberate called A5A. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Now, watch this. Now come the men of Sigma Pi Phi, a once secret black fraternity. that celebrates the professional and material success of black men. <laughs> Have we had much material success? Well, anyway, you can just see how they spend their time. They have big, every year, they have big picnics, big annual picnics, every chapter. We need to find the park. So as I said, you know, they are not just going to pass some kind of law or pass some kind of, you know, do something that's going to allow us to surpass them in power and success. We have to really work hard to come close to doing that because you have to understand as long as we do it the right way, they can't stop us. As long as we try to do it, they can't stop us because everything is played out on, you know, a grand scale, you know, with things like YouTube and, you know, free media, the internet and everything like that, you know, we can really be heard. We can put out the truth. We can get our information out there and they can't stop that. They're trying to, but they can't. So if we make the effort to change our image, it's nothing they can do to stop it. We just have to do it. But you don't know who you can trust. You have a whole organization, a whole secret society of African Americans dedicated to controlling and destroying the image of other African Americans. Sellouts. And if you don't think your favorite rapper's favorite rapper and your favorite rapper is involved, then you are blind. These people, whether they know it or not, are a part of an organization that is designed to destroy the image of African Americans. And they take money for that. These people know what they are doing. They know that, I mean, if you sit down and look in the mirror, you know what you are doing is not good for the image of your people. And some people don't care, you know. We as African Americans and, you know, white people as well, we are willing to let a lot of shit slide in the name of fun. You know, we don't want nobody talking bad about the club and this and that and our music because that's fun to us. When you take away fun, you know, what else do you have? People want to have fun. They don't want somebody in their face telling them their fun is not good for them. But in our case as African Americans, we know we could put out better music and, and still have fun. We've done it. It don't have to be negative gangster, shoot em up, kill em type music that we got to put out to enjoy ourselves and have a good time. It's a lot of good music, even from, you know, from Jay-Z and from a lot of your favorite rappers who put out songs, put out records that was not violent, that was, good, you know, good records. You know, it don't have to be so negative all the time. But we got to look at this and say that this is the reason why the white America, while white America has an issue with African Americans, because if you do not live in an African American community, if the only place you get your view on African Americans is the news and TV, then of course you are not, you're not going to like us. You're going to think there's something wrong with us. You're going to think we got issues. We're just violent, lazy, you know, drug addicted people with problems. And this is the issue with white America, because they get their image of African-Americans from TV because they too damn scared to come into the neighborhood or to do research 
and, and you know, to see why things are the way it is. And we sitting out here and we screaming, it ain't us. We trying to do what we can do. What we can do, we've done what we got to do to survive. When we scream that, it's, you know, it's not heard. So we got to step back and look at all this and see the obvious picture because, you know, we get caught up in so much in our everyday life and we don't have time to deal with, you know, every situation. You know, you got people who have no clue about any of the information, you know, that I put out, that I talk about or anything that I've talked about in this video. People just don't know because who really has the time to do the research or to even worry about stuff like this? We are so constantly dealing with life, but we got we to gotta start realizing that the issues that we are facing in life are because of things like this. And since we don't know about things like this, we can't deal with the issues, truly deal with the issues that we face in our everyday life. I mean, you have a whole organization, a whole organization, secret society of African-American people, prominent people. If they are taking our successful black men, you know, the apex, the epitome of what we are trying to accomplish as African-Americans, if they are taking these people and putting them in secret societies to control the success of the rest of us or to control the image or the direction of an entire of our entire race you know it's something we have to address and we have to really know who our enemy is and and understand it's not always the white man not always the white man we got to pay attention to these sellouts a lot of you call them your hero you look up to these people you, you listen to their music. You praise these people. You worship these people more than you do your God. And these people have signed contracts and taken oaths and entered into agreements and to secret societies dedicated to destroying you, destroying us. And it's, it's sick, <laughs> frankly. I mean, it's fucking crazy when you think about what we go through just because our image y'all think it's about the color of our skin it has nothing to do with the color this just identifies us as one of them if our image was cast as successful people you don't see people looking at i mean asians get you know discriminated against of course but ain't nobody saying you know look at that yellow asian because of he a crack dealer or he's just stupid. No, they are the number one superpower in the world today, China. So you can't look at them and really say that, but they can control their image. They control their image. We're not controlling our image. So people look at us and they associate the skin color with an image. And that image is one of, you know, Murder, rape, drugs, violence, stupidity, you know, poverty. And we have to start paying attention to how we are being portrayed and stop helping them destroy our image with these stupid videos we keep posting and sharing all throughout social media. And we have to understand that this boule, these people who you look up to, they are your enemy. And they are not your friend. And it's the same thing that happened in Kemet, which is why, as I said before in the video, why they use that logo. I mean, that says a lot right there. And I talked about it in a previous video. But you have to really grasp the power of the network, the big six, and how they have the ability to really, you know, destroy our image. I mean, they can completely keep us out of the media in any kind of positive light. And they have basically successfully done that. And I can't blame certain people who look at the media and look at TV and they say, damn, look at these niggas. What's wrong with them? When we are sitting there showing them what WorldStarHipHop.com and all these videos, we are showing them exactly what the media is saying about us and making it true. We are saying, we are proving to them exactly what the KKK says about us. We just stupid, ignorant Negroes destroying America, this and that, blah, 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 violence. 
And then we go and we prove them right by sharing these videos and aiding to, you know, their attack against the African-American image. So, of course, as I said, if you don't live in a black neighborhood, obviously they're going to go with the image that they're seeing on TV. And it's going to create a situation where you have people looking down at us or saying we are the cause of all of the problems in the African-American community. And we all know that it's steeping in that. So, you know, bottom line. We have to start being more conscious of our image and understanding the media's role because these people are bought and paid for. They are paid to make us look bad. And we need to really start making a conscious effort to get more media out there of positive African-American activities and events that we do, things that we do. Which is why I don't knock no black person on YouTube who putting out any kind of, you know, conscious information. I don't hate on nobody. I don't talk against nobody that's trying to make an effort to put out, you know, good information. And, you know, I can't stand it when a lot of people come here and have negative things to talk about as far as the video goes. And it takes completely away from the overall message. Some people, I get a lot of uh, comments from people who say, well, I would have said this. Okay, well, good. Say that. You put out a video and you know, a lot of people want to control the way you talk. And, you know, unfortunately, I can't dictate my videos the way, you know, in a way that would fit the, you know, the personality of everybody you know, in the world. I can't do that. I can only be me and speak the way I speak and talk about what I talk about and in the manner that I talk about it. Like I said in my very first video, if you remember, I said, this is not me. I'm not in front of the camera type of person. It really took me a while to start, you know, trying to get into the flow of speaking in front of the camera and talking and try to express myself. And sometimes, I mean, you can't see people, but it, it's, it'd be people here sometimes with me when I'm, when I'm doing the videos, you know, friends or what have you. So, you know, it's not easy to do this. And I know a lot of people are scared and they don't want to put out videos. A lot of people feel uncomfortable. Some people don't know how to express themselves. And, you know, I'm going to tell you, you know, firsthand, I was one of those people and I really, you know, felt like I couldn't do it. But, it comes a time when you're going to see something or when you start doing this information, it's going to move you. You know, it's something that's going to happen inside and you're going to get so angry that you feel like, you know, fuck this. I, I got to say something. And that's what happened to me. I said, you know what? People are not going to figure this out. People are not going to understand this. And I felt like as being a scholar, being a person who is really into books, <laughs> really into studying that I had to tell people. And like I said, I know you guys feel the same way. That's why you share the videos. That's why you, you do what you do. You do your research because you feel like, you know, I got to tell somebody about this information. Y'all got to see this. Oh my God, you got to watch because you feel like it's something in you that makes you want to get the information out. And this is how I felt, you know, when I started doing these videos and I said, you know, what, I got to say something. So, you know, my final word is to urge people to, you know, look within yourself, take that time and, you know, put out a message, put out the videos. Some people have talent. Some people know how to act. Acting is a talent, whether you accept that or not. It is. It's, it's a skill. You can act. You can sing. You can rap. Whatever you can do. Use it. Use it. Do something positive. Put the information out in whatever way you can, whatever way. You can do it to get it out there because now, for this time now, while we still have control over, you know, the Internet, while we can put out anything we want without it being, you know, too much censored, put it out. Put out anything that's going to aid in the, in the uh, making us look better and the image, you know, bettering the image of African-Americans because we need it. We need it. So, you know, at some point, like, like I said, it's going to come a time where you can't run and hide. You're not going to be able to be scared. You're going to have to stand up and fight. And, you know, and that time is really here as far as the media and putting out a better image of us. We got to start doing it as a people and not allowing them to control the way we look to the world and the way we look to our own people and putting in the image of our children that we are nothing but lazy, you know, good for nothing, murdering drug dealers and, you know, uneducated black people. We can't allow them to do that to our children. So. We got to change that whole tone and show that we are much more 
than you know how they portray us but you know this was my video and i'll see you guys next video thanks for watching